The special counsel's Russia probe will return next year, but now it's the FBI that's coming under mounting scrutiny and for unexpected reasons. This week, FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe went before two House committees behind closed doors for official grillings over the Russia probe. But it's the FBI's handling of the Hillary Clinton email scandal that's suddenly coming into sharp focus. Congressman Matt Gates joins us from Florida with new information about his Judiciary Committee meeting with McCabe yesterday. Welcome, Congressman. So what happened behind closed doors and what are you allowed to say to us? Well, Jesse, this was the first in what will be a series of confidential interviews that we'll be having with key witnesses that had a front row seat to the exoneration of Hillary Clinton, which seems to depart from the standard practices and procedures. So I can't uh, share with you the specific questions or answers. I can share with you my reactions to them. And I can tell you three things that have been confirmed for me. First, Hillary Clinton absolutely got special treatment. Her process departed from the standard process most Americans would face. Second, she received that special treatment treatment because she was a candidate for president. Mm -hmm. No other reason. Third thing that we absolutely know, there were people in the highest levels of this government that were doing everything possible to make sure that Hillary Clinton did not face consequences. Some of those very people have now migrated over to the Mueller probe and are persecuting the president of the United States without a valid basis. And that's why the work we're doing in the Judiciary Committee is so important. All right. That's very interesting. So we all know that Hillary got special treatment from, you know, the tarmac meeting to writing an exoneration letter before exonerating her, to softening the language to take out the criminality, to, I mean, mm -hmm. she went in for an interview and wasn't under oath. So we, we know that mm -hmm. happened. At this point, what are you going to do about it? Well, we have to change the laws so that this can never happen again. We've also got to find out whether or not some of the bribes paid to the Clinton Foundation are actively disrupting the policies and priorities of the United States on a going forward basis. And until we have a thorough investigation of the potential bribes that the Clinton Foundation took and then the actions that fell as a consequence of those bribes, I fear that we won't truly know the depth of the corruption in the last administration. But we've got to change the laws so that never again can we have a circumstance where someone gets special treatment because of their political status or because they're a candidate for high office. That is not the blind lady justice that we promised the American people in this country under our Constitution, Jesse. I agree with that 100 percent. So are you calling for a new or second special counsel to investigate Hillary right. and the foundation and all that? Well, for five months now, Jesse, over 20 members of the Judiciary Committee have been calling for a second special counsel to investigate the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton email server, and the entire handling of that process. But what's so troubling to me is that the Attorney General has been sitting on his hands. Despite the fact that we've had these calls for a second special counsel, the Attorney General hasn't done it. And it's just a double standard when you've got this special counsel that has right. a limitless budget, limitless authority persecuting the president, and we're not looking at the real crimes from the real criminals. Okay. So so can I ask you, I know you're not allowed to say everything, but did you ask McCabe about that meeting where it was the FBI agent who hated Trump and his mistress? They were in this meeting and they talked about protecting the country from a Trump presidency and taking out an insurance policy if Trump was elected president. Did you ask about that? Well, Jesse, I can't go into the specific questions asked and the answers provided, but I will say that when you look at the commentary from the mainstream media on that, they're just spinning because they have no idea how to explain it. But the American people. All right, listen, I'm going to assume I'm going to assume that, that you asked about that because that is huge. I would assume that you did. Now, this is just breaking. I don't know if you know about it, but it looks like James Baker, who was the top lawyer in the FBI, was just reassigned. Turns out they found he had contact with this left wing outfit, Mother Jones and David Korn. And two weeks later, after he had contact with them, they break the dossier story. Seems really I can suspicious. Tell you this. Yeah, I don't think James Baker is a lawyer in this fact pattern anymore. I believe that Mr. Baker is a witness. Mm. And because he's a witness, I think he very, we very well may be one of the next people called before one of these committees conducting a fact-based investigation because uh, certainly we've had at the very highest levels of the FBI and the Department of Justice a number of contaminating events that erode the American people's confidence in the unbiased nature of these critical institutions. Well, it seems like the more people investigate... Uh, it's the Democrats that look guilty of corruption, not Trump. But we'll see. You know, anything could happen. And Congressman Gates, thanks for your service.
Thank you, Jesse. So with Christmas closing in, it is time to check who's made the nice list this year and who's getting a lump of coal in their stocking. But in place of Santa, we've got an all-star panel here with their picks. Chris Steierwalt is Fox News politics editor. Molly Hemingway is senior editor at The Federalist and a Fox News contributor. And Wendy Osifo is a professor and political commentator. Chris Steierwalt, I'm going to start with you. Donald Trump is at the top of your nice list. I'm so surprised about that. Why? You think he's not nice? No, I, I'm surprised you put him there along with Speaker Paul Ryan. Well, uh, certainly Trump has demonstrated uh, much niceness in 2017. Uh, he has been uh, surprising to both his critics and his supporters. And that's one of the best things that a, poli a politician can do or be is to surprise. It's what got him into the race and, and it's what made him the Republican nominee. And his capacity to surprise has also included that he has been a lot more uh, agreeable and amiable uh, than a lot of people thought that he would be. Uh, and Paul Ryan is a good twin for him there because, in fact, Ryan started out the Trump presidency ready to fight with Trump and, and drag over broken glass uh, his agenda. And in the end, they finished the year simpatico. Yeah, with a big a victory will do that for you. Um, Molly, you have Taylor Swift at the top of your nice list. Why is that? <laughs> Taylor Swift is the only celebrity, if not the only American, who can go 10 minutes without screaming about politics. And I think this should be commended in a year when people yeah, she's were smart. unable to do that. She likes she to make money. <laughs> she yeah. understands that this is not related to her, that talking about politics is not why people like her. And she's able to set it aside, even though many people have tried to bully her into uh, joining the resistance vocally. So yeah. kudos to her. Why'd you put Ronan Farrow on your list? And I mean, Ronan he's a great Farrell. reporter, but yeah. Yes. Well, it was his tenacious and dogged reporting that led to the Harvey Weinstein scandal being yeah. uh, put out publicly. And he put his own resources and reputation on the line and mm -hmm. almost certainly helped women who would have been who would have been harmed by him in the future had he not done this. You know, people had rumored about yeah. it for so long, but he's the one who actually got it out there. And he got the goods. I mean, he did the real work. There's a lot of people who deal in unnamed sources, and he was there with all the details and, and you know, really good old-fashioned journalism. Wendy, um, you have Hillary Clinton on your nice list. I don't know. I do. I, when I think of Hillary Clinton, <laughs> there are a lot of words that come to mind. I'm not sure. I'm not sure necessarily nice is right up at the top, but how come it is for you? I have Hillary Clinton up there because I just think that overall she's just been a champion for a majority of women. But another person who I had on there that I was surprised I actually put on there, I reached across the aisle and I put Marco Rubio on my nice list. As a Democrat, you wouldn't expect me to say that, but I think there's something to be said for him when he said, you know what, we need to increase the tax credit for low income and moderate income families. And I thought that was really important and mm. I tip my hat to him, even though he is across the aisle. That was a good job by Marco okay. Rubio. Now we all can't wait to get to naughty, so let's just just go for that no. right there. Chris Steyerwell, is this a misprint or is President Trump also at the top of your naughty list? And what is up with that? Also naughty. Uh, Trump has, the, there are a couple of few kinds of Trump uh, and of the problems that the administration has had this year, you know, they had a good close, but a very rocky opening. And a lot of that came just from Trump acting out, just from uh, Trump Trumpin'. Yeah, when he was being obdurate or when he was being mean-spirited, when he was being unpleasant or unkind uh, for the sake of itself. And oftentimes that's where Trump finds himself is losing ground, gain, okay. uh, failing to gain where he could because he's doing unnecessarily naughty things. Okay. I saw Steve Bannon on there, too. I don't think I need to ask you why he's on the list. <laughs> Molly, Alabama. let's go yes. right to you. You on your naughty list, environmentalists who hate children. That was yeah, in, in, <laughs> Explain in that to our was, audience in case they don't know about that. In July, there was this report that if you wanted to take care of climate change, you need to have fewer kids. And they and feminists joined together and said everyone should have fewer kids, which led people Wait, to jokingly... Yeah, well, and they were posting pictures of their family asking which one of their kids they should let go to uh, to help with climate change. But just in general, if you're opposed to kids, you're definitely naughty. That's the nicest thing I can say about it. It's really bad to You put not Brian love Ross children. on your naughty list. I think I know why that is the case. Um, yeah, Brian yes, Ross and, and the rest of the political media who had so many bad stories, all pushing a false narrative about Russia collusion. All of their errors went in the same direction. It was a really bad year, particularly because they wanted to spend the year holding Trump Trump accountable okay. and instead they had all these problems. Wendy, you have the NFL at the top of your naughty list. 
I sure did. I feel like the NFL really mismanaged everything to do with the Kaepernick uh, protest. Quite frankly, it was about social justice. They fumbled the ball. They should have done more. And then on top of that, I also feel like they blackballed Colin Kaepernick. You know, he was not able to try out for any team. If they would have brought him onto a team, I believe a lot of this would have been dulled down. And then on top of that, you know, the NFL continues to have issues with their players, not just when it comes to social justice, but also also domestic violence and they're not doing their job so you know what their ratings are down and yeah. they're down for a reason so uh, Chris real quick do you think that President Trump would take more pleasure in being on the nice or the naughty list real quick just a couple <laughs> seconds well, his, a his answer to that question will determine whether or not the Republicans are gonna have a okay 2018 uh, and whether or not he gets elected in 2020 it's all about choices I don't know I mean the naughty list that could I could be how he got in office in the first place is that willingness Agreed. to just be naughty and go against the grain We've got to go. Merry Christmas to all three Merry of you. Christmas. Thank you for Merry coming Christmas. on.